Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. The unique look of this picture is down to the type of light used. Now this was entirely lit with a ring light. The coaxial nature of this light gives a completely shadowless result, ideal for subjects with lots of promontories and texture. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so let's start with the ring light. So this is a ring light. Uh, and as the name suggests, uh, we have a flash tube in here, which is in the shape of a ring. And this is designed to go around uh, the lens of the camera. So let me just show you that. So if I just get my camera, now I'm using a medium format camera, but the same applies to full frame or uh, micro four thirds or whatever you're using. The idea is exactly the same. So this would be fitted just in here like this. There we are. So when that's locked on, the light is uh, coaxial about the lens of the camera. And that will give a unique result. So, before we actually start looking at the, uh, the way the photograph is taken, it's worth looking at just what type of light uh, you get out of this system. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is actually take the camera off the ring. And I'm going to set the ring up on the table here, and I'm going to set the camera up over here, and we're just going to take a picture of the actual flash itself just to show what you get out of it. So there we are, I've set the camera up on a tripod and I've tethered it into Capture One software so it's easy to see the results as we go along. And I've set this uh, just on an arm here just so that uh, it's perpendicular to the camera. OK, so with all that set, what I'm going to do is just grab an image. So the settings that I have on the camera at the moment, it's in full manual mode, I've got a shutter speed of 125th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera, ISO 100, and I'm using an aperture at the moment of f8. Now, I've previously turned the energy down to the lowest level on this flash head. So let's just see what we get. And there you are. You can see that you've got a continuous ring of light. Uh, but we can't see very much detail in that. So what I'm going to do is just take this down from f8 all the way to f32. We'll just grab that again. There we are. And now you can see uh, the various holders which are holding the flash tube, and you can see that it's a completely round flash tube. Now that's quite important because that is what will cause the shadowless light, that and its position. So in order to show what uh, shape of light comes out of this, what I'm going to do is just turn this round through 90 degrees. OK, so with that done, what I can do now is just put a piece of card directly in front of the flash like this. And then on here, you should be able to see the shape of the light which comes out. So let's just grab that. Ah yes, and we're still at um, f32, so let me just change that. I'll put that down to a more reasonable f8. I'll just grab that again. There we are. So here you can see the edge of the flash itself, and here on the card you can see the extent of the light coming out. Now, just to add a little bit of scale to that, what I've done is added a rule across here uh, so you can see uh, just how close to the actual flash itself you get full illumination. So let's just grab an image with that in the picture. There you are. You can see from here that more or less one inch, 25 millimeters away from the front of the actual light itself, you're getting full illumination. I'll just zoom into that. 
And it's that which gives this light its unique properties. OK, so next thing to do would be to uh, mount this properly uh, around the lens of the camera. There we are, so that's all mounted now. So if I just rotate this, you should be able to see that the lens is in the centre and the flash tube is all the way around the outside. And that is what is going to give us this unique look. OK, so we'll point that back at our table. And I'm just going to move all this uh, slightly in so that I can put the subject in position. So I'm going to place the subject around here somewhere on the table. There we are. So I've placed the subject in this very small clamp, uh, which makes it easy to manoeuvre around to get it in something like the right position. Uh, so I'm just going to need to uh, align the camera. So I'll do that next. Obviously, it's going to need to come down quite a long way. So I'll just wind it down on the centre column here. Probably about there might do. And I just want to point that down at the subject a bit and turn it round. So probably about there somewhere. OK, so I'll just look through the viewfinder and we'll line it up properly. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just manoeuvre that until it's in something like the right position. And we'll just go for a rough focus. I'm just doing this by eye at the moment. We'll get more of an accurate focus later. There we go, something like that. OK, so with that set, and with no flash set yet, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll just make sure this will not fire, and I'm just going to grab an image, uh, just with the settings that I have on the camera at the moment, just to make sure I don't get any contamination from the house lights. OK. Let's do that. And there, we've got no picture at all, which is uh, exactly what we want. So now any light I add will be the only light which affects the subject. Right, so as a comparison, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a normal flash head just about here somewhere, just to show you uh, what you get with a normal flash head as compared to a ring flash. So here we are. So I'm just going to pop this just in here, something like that. Not ideal, but it'll do as a comparison. Right, so we'll just turn this one on. And just at an arbitrary energy level, uh, I'll just grab an image and we'll see what we get. OK, and you can see from this that the exposure is actually not too bad. But the quality of the light is... I mean, it's OK, we've got a reasonable picture here, but there's lots of shadows caused by all the various spikes on this thistle. So now, without actually moving any of the lights, what I'm going to do is turn this one off, and I'm just going to turn this one on, and we'll see what we get. OK, so let's just grab that. And again, the exposure isn't too bad, but the quality of the light is completely different to what we had before. If I just go back to the original picture, that is what we had with this light here. And this is what we have with this light here. OK, so I think I'd just like to uh, just zoom in and we'll have a little look around the image. You can see all the detail that we've got in there and it is completely shadowless. But I think I'd like to try for a, a much deeper depth of field than I have at the moment. So what I'm going to do is change the aperture from f8 to f32. So that's a five stop change, so I'll have to add five stops of energy to this light. OK, so with that done, what I can do now is grab another image and we'll see what we get. There we are. So now if I zoom in, 
we can see all the detail is retained across the image, which is quite nice. So that is what we had before, and that is what we've got now. I know there's a slight difference in exposure between the two. These things are never that consistent. However, the major change is the sharpness across the image, which I think has worked rather well. OK, so that's it. So that is how I've used this ring light uh, to produce this particular type of look. Now, it doesn't work for everything, but it does work predominantly with macro subjects. Uh, and sometimes you can use this uh, for portraiture uh, and so on. But those are all for another day. What I'm going to do now is take this image and just pop it into Photoshop and just do the bare minimum of post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. And as you can see, the exposure looks about right and the image itself is OK. I think the whole thing needs to rotate slightly in the frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually pick a crop and at the same time as cropping the image I can also rotate it. So if I just start by rotating that I just want to ever so slightly square it up a bit. Something like that. There we are. Click on OK. And just to address this bit down the side here, uh, I'm just going to add another layer. You don't actually have to do it this way, but I like to always keep things so that I can always go back a step if I need to. So if I just draw on this layer with black, so I'll find a paintbrush, make sure that black is selected as the foreground colour, make this very soft, possibly a bit bigger, and just fill that in. There we go. And there we have it. So by utilising the unique features of a ring flash or ring light, I've been able to capture this image of this thistle. And I think the quality of the light has really enhanced the subject. And I think overall that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other pictures as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.